Hey, Psych2Goers, and welcome back to another video. Are you always feeling the blues, but you're not sure why? Happiness is proven to be a subjective rather than an objective topic. As the famous saying goes, happiness is a direction, not a place. So for each, the road is different. Science has no surefire formula to attain happiness, but interestingly enough, science plays a huge role in the research conducted on what makes you unhappy. Causes for unhappiness are often mutual and easily distinguished. They're subtle troublemakers that creep up on you without notice, and before long, you're in unhappy waters. It doesn't take a genius to work out that tiredness, stress, and loneliness are lead causes. Recognizing these is half the battle. There are many other subtle things that can slowly make you feel unhappy, and you might not even realize that it's affecting you until it's too late. Please remember this video is not designed to diagnose any mental health condition associated with the feelings of sadness. If you are experiencing persistent unhappiness, sadness, or episodes of feeling low, be sure to seek professional help right away. With that said, here are eight subtle things that slowly make you unhappy. Number one, social media. Facebook, Instagram, ring any bells? Do you find yourself scrolling through social media for hours on end? If so, it could be contributing to your unhappiness. A study conducted at the University of Michigan by psychologist Ethan Cross found a direct correlation between time spent on social media sites and feelings of dissatisfaction, loneliness, and isolation. Other studies are blaming the compare and despair, envy effect of social media sites for sparking jealousy and suspicion in relationships. Oh boy. Social media is everywhere and is filled with messages about how we should look, feel, think, and behave. Considering digital detox to resist and focus on your own mental well-being can be helpful in reducing the negative side of it. Two, overanalyzing situations. Do you spend ages worrying about whether you've made the right decision? Researchers have linked questioning decisions with stress and unhappiness. In 2011, Dr. Joyce Erlinger and her team at Florida State University identified two types of decision makers. Maximizers, individuals who obsess over decisions, big or small, and then fret about their choices later, and satisfiers, those who tend to make a decision and then live with it. People who consistently overanalyze situations end up, over time, experiencing episodes of unhappiness. Number three, having too many choices. Isn't it always nice to have options? But as they say in life, too much of anything is never a good thing. So is the case with choices. A 2010 research paper from Stanford University's Department of Psychology discovered that having too many choices makes us miserable. Scientists at the university looked into the cultural ideas surrounding choice and found that freedom and choice are less important or mean something different in various cultures. Some people find that having too much variety can then be followed by uncertainty and regret about whether they'd made the right decision. Number four, talking badly about yourself in your head. Are you a pro at self-talk? Do you hold long debates in your head? Most people have a form of self-talk in their heads, which can also help guide them and offer positive affirmations on a daily basis. But what happens when you experience negative self-talk? This can slowly have an impact on your well-being and unhappiness. The reason for such harsh negative self-talk is because as children, it's taught that being tough on yourself is motivating and the best way to force yourself to be disciplined and get things done. But it's important to take time to be kind to yourself and not put such high expectations on yourself. Learning how to be realistic can work towards building a more positive sense of self-worth and happiness. Number five, being materialistic. The saying goes that money can't buy you happiness, and apparently research supports this. In fact, some research has shown that very wealthy people actually suffer from higher rates of depression. Studies also stated that other research has indicated that a desire for wealth and material possession is linked to a need to mask their inner discontent. The constant pursuit leaves one desolate and dissatisfied. Number six, having a poor relationship with siblings. Are arguments the only form of communication between you and your siblings? Do you find it difficult to get along with them and have a good relationship? A 2007 study in the American Journal of Psychiatry found that men who had very poor relationships with their siblings during childhood are at significantly greater risk for depression in adulthood. 
compared to those who get along better with their brothers and sisters. Furthermore, in 2012, psychologists at the University of Missouri concluded that teenage siblings who argue over two topics in particular, personal conflicts and fairness issues, are more at risk of suffering depressive symptoms, low self-esteem and anxiety. Researchers believe that good sibling relationships in childhood could help children socialize and relate to their peers during the course of their development. So not having a good relationship with your siblings could also be contributing to your unhappiness. Number seven, having a wandering mind. Are you an avid daydreamer? Can you count the number of novels you've written in your head to date? It's perfectly normal to daydream throughout the day. But a 2010 study from Harvard researchers identified mind wandering as a major cause of unhappiness. According to the research, only 4.6% of people's unhappiness could be attributed to what they were doing, but 10.8 of it was caused by what they were thinking about at the time. And people consistently reported being happiest when their minds were on what they were doing. The findings are backed up by the age old philosophy that living in the here and now leads to greater happiness. If you feel like your wandering mind is contributing to feelings of unhappiness, then now might be a good time to engage in some mindfulness exercises so you can practice on working on being in the present. And number eight, negative work environment. Feeling overwhelmed at work? Researchers at the Department of Clinical Medicine at RS University found a link between workplace depression and our environment. They concluded that the work environment and the feelings of being treated unfairly by management can most dramatically alter an employee's mood. Furthermore, the researchers found that perceived unfair treatment led to higher rates of the stress hormone cortisol. Overall unhappiness and depression appear to be caused by management behavior and work environment rather than workload. We hope we were able to give you insight into some of the things that may be the root cause of your unhappiness. Do any of these apply to you? What other things do you think are making you unhappy? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and share it with others out there navigating the murky waters of unhappiness. Thanks for watching and we'll see you real soon.